Hey everyone, welcome back and happy, hmm, well, Sunday. Happy Easter if you celebrate, if you don't, happy Sunday fun day. If it's not happy, just Sunday, almost Monday because it's a new week. However you want to look at this, but let's just look at it glass half full all the way around. Anyways, speaking of glass half empty, um, I want to talk about this Jackson Brittany fight because they cannot control themselves right now on the podcast. And I don't know if this is, it, it still has me like, is it real? Is it not real? Is it for TV? Is it not for TV? Like a lot of these Bravo liberties know what makes good TV. So it still leaves you. You can't forget that. You know what I mean? Especially when Jax is like, this is my show. You see him pre-producing by bringing Alex into the situation when Kristen's boyfriend, Luke is coming to guys night. Like you see it. So you're like, eh, you're skeptical. But we're going to break it down. I'm going to play the audio for you. Before we jump in, go ahead and smash that like button. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And let's jump right in. Okay, guys. So we're starting off with the Jackson Brittany of it all. And... Uh, God, thank you to page six. They said Brittany Cartwright tells estranged husband Jax Taylor she cannot stand him during a fight on their podcast. Brittany told her estranged husband Jax Taylor that she cannot stand him during their argument on their podcast. And it was during a recent episode of When Reality Hits, the mom of one discussed how she always takes up for Jax. I'm always trying to apologize for Jax and like try to make him look better in the situations that he stirs up. That's what she shared before Jax said she didn't need to do that. Hmm. I've done it for nine years for you. I know. That's just how loyal and a ride or die kind of person, you know, that you married. Now, Jax then corrected his estranged wife's past tense reference to their marriage, saying, you are married too. Now, Brittany said she took up for him 24-7, right? It was like a job. That's what happens when you have a loyal wife who will blindly stick up for the person you love. Now, after Jack said that he was the one who created the concept for the new show, The Valley, Brittany told him that she cannot stand him for taking all the credit when she was right there with him every step of the way. Now, last month, the Bravo Liberties announced that they were separating after nearly five years of marriage. Yes, marriage in general, they're hard. And I've had a particularly rough year this last year. That's what Brittany said on the podcast. But... Jax and I are taking time apart, and I made the decision to move into another home to take some space for the sake of my mental health. Now, a rep for the former couple told Page Six exclusively that the breakup was most definitely not PR-related in any way. And days before the news of the split surfaced, Jax and Brittany were seen living separately. So earlier this month, Brittany exclusively told Page Six that her separation from Jax was due to his lack of interest in sex. We've been together for nine years, and people stop appreciating and take you for granted. And after some time, that should never happen in a marriage. Hmm. Well, let's roll the clip of what exactly she's talking about. Thank you over here to the Bravo investigator. You know, that's that was what my actions were at that point. I'm always trying to apologize for Jax and like try to make him look better in the situations that he stirs that. up. Don't need to do that. I've done it I for nine it. years for you. I know. I, that's just like a, how loyal and ride or die I was for the person that I was married to. Mm -hmm. You know, you are married to. I know, but still, you know what I mean. Like I literally like took that for you twenty four seven. It was like a, a, it was a job. That's the part. That's the part of being married. <laughs> well, that's what happens like, when you have a loyal wife. You will blindly stick up for the person you love. And also, when I created the show, and I was like, <laughs> "Quit well, saying when I created I, the I'm show." Make sure I was knows. right there with you every step of the way. Can I have a little credit? You were. I'm the one who went out and talked to every single couple in this group and got them to be on the show. I made you do that. I go, you "Oh my talk gosh. To them. <laughs> I cannot believe I cannot stand you. I, I <laughs> like. I just thought, you know, that's that was what my actions were at that point. I'm always trying to apologize for Jax and like. Mm. Okay, well. It doesn't stop there. There's more of the bickering that continues to happen. This time, Jax is explaining why it seems like he cares so much about Kristen's life. And Brittany is calling him out about it. By the way, that would drive me insane. Jason and I do all of this stuff together, right? So when you have somebody who's like, well, I did it and I did. It. And sometimes that happens where you feel like you've, you know, done a lot of the legwork or the other person feels like they've done a lot of the legwork and you kind of get frustrated and you just say things and you don't always mean it. And that's okay. That's a relationship shit happens. 
you're up each other's ass not literally or maybe i don't know but 24 7. so it happens it's normal it's life welcome to an adult relationship been in one for 10 years i get it but moving on here we go why did you why do you care so much about christian's pregnancy let me tell you let me explain how filming works a little bit um i had the conversations with multiple different people so i assumed that they were looking for the right way for me to talk about it, the right person. So instead of me just talking about it with one person, they had me talk about it with everybody. So it really looks like that I cared a lot about the situation. Do I care? Of course, but Dad, not as much. Honey, I love that you try to make excuses for everything, but you said everything that you said. I know, but I talked <laughs> about it with everybody because I it's like on the show. Right. Like, like, yeah, you, like, yeah, you're like, oh, it was, it looked very heavy on me digging into Kristen's wanting to be a mom. But at the same time, you, you'd say all everything that was on there. You're on camera saying I it. Hey, my head thought, okay, they'll talk about this with one or two people. They're just trying to find the best conversation of me having this with a certain person. But instead of just finding one or two good people, they, they use all seven conversations of the same thing. Uh, I don't know about that because you were literally sitting in the kitchen with the same people and you talked about it over and over uh, with the same people with other people again so i kind of recapped it i mean it was the same crew sitting around the table I, there, guys. <laughs> I, I, I do have my own problems i'm not that invested in this i was just trying to do my due diligence as a good friend but it kind of looked like i cared Producing. a lot more than i did and i am i, I want the best for Kristen and luke and, and i hope everything works out for them whatever they decide to do because like, like why did you why did you producing last one There's see what was not shown is that I told Jax multiple times that he should not invite Alex to guys night because it would ruin our girls night. And us moms deserve to have that one freaking night, especially would, Nia, who had just had twins, never gets to go out. Expe actually, especially all of us. Like we, we rarely get to like do those types of nights. Well, first of all, so, how, why would she find out? Why did somebody call and like crap? Like, like, I had to tell her out? because she was going to find out eventually. They were literally like, Hey, let's check in on our husbands. And it's like, okay, I have to let her know that, that you invited Alex. But like, what wasn't shown is that I did tell you not to invite Alex. And then you like convinced me that you were doing it for the best reasons. And I'm that, sorry. I, I, and I that you had the back. good intentions and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, so then what, you as my husband, because you know, I'm ride or die for the people I love. So I had to like sit there and try to like take up for you and clean up your mess all night. So it literally ruined our girls night and caused a fight between me and one of my best friends because I had to take up for you and your actions I'm as sorry, usual. I don't take those. See, what was not? Mm. That would drive me insane. Okay. So what I gathered from this is that this is why I don't know, like when you sit there and you go back and forth as to, like in your mind, wondering whether or not, is this real? Is it not? You see the parts that are pre-produced, like Jack saying, well, producers wanted the right conversation. So I went around and I had the same conversation with everybody in the room and it was, I didn't know that they were going to use all of them, but that, that, that is reality TV. I remember, and I've said this so many times on my channel, I remember season two or season three, it was one of them, um, where Stassi was outside behind Sir in the Sir alleyway. They wanted her to have this moment of confrontation where she was about to walk in and just like blow everyone's minds and say X, Y, and Z. I walked out going to my car to fill up my parking meter. And I remember her distinctly telling producers, no, I'm not doing that. I don't care what you guys want me to do. I'm not doing it. Absolutely not. No, you're not making me look like an idiot. So... Are you pre-producing all of this for the show? If you are, wow. And if you're not, happy Easter to the Cartwright Couchies. Jason Couchy, that's his last name, right? Mm, okay. Smash that like button, show some love, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.